Hi, and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire, and this is the last of my episodes of My Favorite Crafty Things for 2017. I'm sorry there was a delay for this one, and I'm getting it in right at the end of the new year, but it is my favorite topic, and that is organization. Now be sure to head to my blog so you can see all of my other favorite crafty things from this year if you haven't done so already. Also below I will link to my favorite crafty things of organization from last year because many of those things still hold true today. Okay, let's start with stamp storage. Now I have tried many different systems over the years and I have narrowed it down to the system I'll share with you today. And I've been using this for quite some time and I am thrilled with it. I use a variety of different pockets for my clear and cling stamps. I'll talk about wood stamps a little bit later. Now for my clear and cling stamps, I use stamp pockets. And there are three different stamp pockets that I use depending on what size my stamp set is. And I'm going to show you each of those stamp pockets today. Now it looks like there are four different sizes here, but there's actually three. And these cover all my stamp pocket needs. Let's start with the most common size. And this is the regular stamp pockets from Avery L. These hold your four by six stamp sets and smaller sizes. I will double up and put two smaller stamp sets in one pocket. Now in the back of the pocket, I do put my coordinating dies so I can easily find them. I have found that the Avery L stamp pockets are great quality and I've never had any tearing problems on the side. Now I do cut white cardstock inserts to go inside each of the pockets just to make it look nicer and I use an inexpensive white cardstock for this. And that white cardstock is just cut slightly smaller than the stamp pocket. Now it does have a little flap that you can tuck in at the top so you can make sure that everything stays inside. And I do label my stamps with the company name and the stamp set name up on the top left corner. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Now I mostly have stamp sets this size, so I have a lot of those stamp pockets. Now there are also stamp sets that are a little bit longer. Instead of four by six, these are four by eight. And these won't fit in the regular stamp pockets. You could have them stick out the top of the regular stamp pockets, but I prefer to use a tall stamp pocket for them. Now these tall stamp pockets are from My Favorite Things, and they're eight and a half inches tall and about the same width as the regular stamp pocket that you see there on the left. So I will store these together in the same containers. Yes, some of these stamp pockets are a little bit taller than the others, but that's okay. I just make sure that my dividers are tall enough and they seem to work well together in the same container, which I'll show you again later in this video. So I don't have as many tall stamp sets, so I don't have as many tall stamp pockets, but it is a nice size to have. Uh, companies like My Favorite Things do have quite a few tall stamp sets. I really like to have a stamp pocket perfect for the size of the stamp set because that way I can close the flap and make sure that the stamps and the coordinating dies stay safe inside. There is one more stamp pocket size that I use, and that is the Avery L Extra Large Stamp Pocket. Now these are ideal for your large stamp sets, your six by eight stamp sets. They're becoming more popular with companies like Alta New, Right at Home, uh, Hero Arts, and a few others. Now you can see these are much wider and taller than the other stamp sets. So I actually store these separately. So the two on the left I store together, this large set here I store separately and I'll show you that in a bit. So this is almost nine and a half inches tall. So you can safely store your six by eight stamp sets and the coordinating dies in the back. These pockets are all similar. They just vary in the size of the pocket. They all have that little flap on the top and I've never had any problems with the quality of these. So two are from Avery L and that tall middle size is from My Favorite Things. And by the way, you can get a stamp pocket like this that's smaller for your smaller stamp sets, but I prefer to just keep my smaller stamp sets in the regular stamp pocket size. Okay, now for my six by six cling background stamps, I love this size stamp. I actually use that Avery L extra large stamp pocket and I trim some off the bottom and tape it shut. So here is the Avery L extra large stamp pocket. And what I do is I just trim a few inches off the bottom. And then I use a piece of scotch tape to tape along that bottom to seal it. 
That way there's not a bunch of stamp pocket kind of flapping at the top. And it's the ideal size for this. So I store all my six by six cling stamps in this modified stamp pocket and I store them all together. I've been doing this for a while now and I just pre-prepared a bunch of pockets with the tape along the bottom and it's really worked well. By the way, all of these stamp pockets do not come with the white cardstock insert. I cut a bunch of those at once so that they're ready to go. And I think uh, Simon Says Stamp actually sells some stamp pocket inserts, so you don't have to cut them if you don't want to. So those are the stamp pocket sizes I, I actually use for all of my cling and clear stamps. And you can see again that that X large pocket is cut down for that background stamp. So there are really three different types of stamp pockets. Once you have your stamps in these pockets, they're very easy to store, very easy to sort through, and they don't take up a lot of room. I have tried many systems in the past, such as using CD cases, DVD cases, a bunch of different things, and this is by far my favorite system to date. Now, the nice thing is also, once you have them in these pockets, there are a variety of containers that work great to hold them. And I'm going to show you my favorites today, but you can find other options too. Now, most of my cling and clear stamps are in one of two types of containers. This is one of them. This is the small container for stamp storage. It's from a company called InterDesign and it's a very high quality product. Now you can see the width of this is a six inches, which is perfect for these stamp pockets. And you can see I have both my regular stamp pockets and my tall stamp pockets in this container. This one container can hold between 60 and 70 stamp pockets. That's a lot of stamps and I create a divider between the companies. I just make sure that the divider is tall enough that I can see it no matter what. And I'll talk about the divider in a moment. You can see how you can easily flip through these, especially when you have the names at the top. You can easily find what you need. Now I prefer the interdesign line of containers because they're high quality and they have handles. Now you could really use any kind of container for this. In fact, many CD containers will be the right size for stamp pockets since they're usually about six inches wide. Now there is one other container that I use for my regular stamps and that is also from InterDesign. This is a large container that actually is like a side-by-side -side, so it holds double of what I just showed you. And I store the same types of stamps in it with the same dividers. It's just a bigger unit. Keep in mind this will be heavier because it holds like 150 stamp sets but I have two of these in a drawer along with one of those narrow ones I just showed you. It just happens to be what fits in my room. And I thought I would share both options because they are two different sizes and one may work better for you than the other. Now for the dividers of all of my stamps and dies, I print a company name on the top of a piece of colored cardstock and then I laminate it with a laminating pouch and a laminator. And I'll, use, I'll link to what I use below. And then I just round the corners so they aren't too pokey. And that is what I use as a divider. So I cut them the width of my stamp pockets, but a little bit taller so that the name sticks out. And again, I'll link to the laminating pouches and the laminator that I use. Very easy to do. And they are super strong and very durable. So here you can see I divide mine by companies. That's just what works best for me. But you can also divide by themes if you prefer. Now for your really big mama stamp sets, those six by eight stamp sets with the Avriel extra large stamp pockets, I have a separate container and I store them all together. So these are all my big mama stamp sets. This is an extra large container from InterDesign that is eight inches wide. So it fits this perfectly. And I store my stamps just like I did the others where I have large dividers with the name that sticks out the top so I can easily find the stamps that I need. I thought it would bother me to have these stored separately from the others, but it hasn't been a problem at all for me. And there are more and more companies coming out with this extra large size stamp set, so it's been handy. And by the way, this is the same container that I use for my 6x6 stamp sets. I've collected a lot of 6x6 stamp sets over the years because I love background stamps. So I have a container dedicated to those also, and it's just like this one, and I store them side by side. Okay, so that's how I store my cling and clear stamps. Next, I wanted to talk about how I store my dies. 
I am as addicted to dyes as I am stamps, so I have quite a few. And there are two different dye pockets that I mainly use for my dyes. About 90% of my dyes are in the small Simons's Stamp dye pocket. These pockets are fantastic because they're extra thick, they're reinforced, reinforced on the edges, and they have a double flap, a big flap that you tuck into a small one, so you can be sure that nothing falls out. So these are heavy duty, so you don't have to worry about your dies kind of tearing up these pockets at all. These are about five inches by five inches, which I find to be a great size for most of my dies. Even many border dies fit in this at a diagonal. Now, if you want to, you can cut a piece of magnetic sheet to fit in here to hold your dies to keep them from falling kind of down in the pocket. But I rarely do that. Unless it's a stacking die set, I usually skip the magnet so that I can save, to, save my money for buying more dies instead. Now, if a die happens to be too big for this pocket, I will just use one of my Avriel regular stamp pockets like I showed you before. This is what I use for my 4x6 clear stamps. It also works great for your larger dies. So I have my larger dies stored separately than my smaller dies that you see there because I don't have as many larger dies. So I do have like my cover plates or my background dies in the Avriel stamp pocket. But I find that these two work great together. Again, most of the dies will fit in the Simons' stamp die pockets. I've been using these for many years and I'm thrilled with that system. And by the way, you could store these pockets in the same container. I just prefer to store them separately. Now for the smaller stamp or die pocket sizes, I have a couple containers that I recommend. The one that I use is this long container for die storage. This is also from InterDesign. And this holds a ton of dies. I mean, we're talking a lot of dies since these are very thin. I've got over a hundred in here. These happen to be my word dies that I have in here. So you can see they're divided by uh, theme or word. I, I divide my dies up by theme, whereas I divide my stamps up by manufacturer. Just what happens to work for me. You just kind of kind of think about how you create. Do you prefer to find something based on the manufacturer or the theme? It just depends. Everybody's a little bit different. Now again, these are my smaller die pockets, and I again have created little dividers with cardstock that I have laminated. These dividers are a different color just so I can have my dies with this peach color and my stamps with the pool color because I'm kind of crazy that way. But again, I made sure that the dividers are a little bit taller than the die pockets so that I can easily see the different categories. Now, if you want a smaller container, there is the short container for die storage from InterDesign. It's just like the other, but a little more than half the size, and they, it fits the dies nicely. I also use this smaller container when I'm working on things. I can easily throw some stamps and dies in there. It's just a nice, handy size to have. And again, these have little handles in the front, so they're easy to grab also. So you can see you can even put your stamps in there if you want to. So those are a couple different options for the die storage. Now for the bigger die pockets, I just use the same stamp storage that I showed you earlier. Now one thing that I think is incredibly important keeping myself organized in my craft room is to have a great label maker. In fact, I have two in case one goes missing or in case Lila wants to help. But it's important to label everything so you can find it easily. I like labels that hold up and therefore I've been using the Brother label makers for many years now. This year I switched to a newer version that they came out with for two reasons. It shows two lines of text in the screen, which I'll show you, and it comes with an adapter, so I use less batteries. And I'm going to show you in this video a couple other ways to save money with labeling also. Now whenever I label a stamp or die, I do the company name in the first line, and then the stamp or die name in the second line. So here I'm going to show an example. In the first line, I'm going to type Hero Arts, just one of my favorite companies. Then I hit enter, and that takes me to the second line. And here I can type in the stamp name. So I'm just gonna type stamp set name there, and now I can hit print twice, and that will print my little label, which will come out the left side. 
Now when I print this, I can cut it by pressing that button up there. And you see there's a lot of wasted tape on the beginning and the back of this. So I want to show you how you can save that tape. You only have to do this once, then your label maker will be set. So you push the green button up at the top that says label. This shows like a menu on the screen. You're going to press the down arrow till you get to the margin selection. So here it says full. We want to change that till it says chain. So I'm going to press that right arrow button until it says chain there. We want to do chain print. That means you can press a, or print a bunch of them at once without wasted space between. So here's what I do when I get some new stamps in, I type in the name and I hit print twice. Then when it says okay to feed, I hit escape. Then I go in and I change the name to my next stamp set. So I just hit the backspace, change the name, hit print twice. Then it'll say okay to feed and I say no, not yet, escape. Then I type in my third stamp set name, hit double print. Then it'll say, is it okay to feed? If I'm done, I just pre press okay. That spits all those labels out and you can see there is very little wasted space in between each label and I just cut them apart with my scissors. Another thing that I like about this label maker is there are different fonts available. You just press font and then you can just press the side arrow to pick the different font selections. I happen to like this one here. So that's what I usually use now too. I like just that it has that different option, but it really isn't necessary to have those different fonts. It does allow you to change the sizes of the fonts and do a bunch of fancy things that I haven't figured out yet. I just do those two basic changes. And once you've changed it once, you don't need to change it again. So again, this is a great label maker. These labels are very durable. You can get them inky and they won't get messy. You can uh, be sure that they'll hold up even if they get wet. So this is definitely a good investment for me. Now I will say that the label refills for the sucker can be quite pricey. And I use a, di a few different size refills. I use like a six millimeter, so it's a narrow uh, label. And I also use the 12. You can get them in clear and white and in a bunch of different colors. But the Brother label refills are expensive. I'm going to link to a less expensive option that I found over on Amazon. It is significantly cheaper. I've been using them for this past year and I've never run into any problems. And I find the quality is the same, at least to my eye, I don't see any differences. So I will link to that other refill option that will save you a ton of money. And there are many different refill pack sizes. You can get like three refills or 12 if you want to. Here's the little plug, by the way, so that you can plug this in if you prefer. And this little label maker does come with the adapter. I have spent quite a bit of time talking about this label maker here, but I'm telling you, it is a lifesaver for me. I use this one in my kitchen and in my office also. I just find it's worth the investment. And it's nice now that I found those less expensive refills, so I find I use it even more. Okay, so now it's time to move on to other types of storage. Now in my craft room, I have a lot of different storage systems that I've tried over the years. And I'll tell you, I, I seem to always come back to some of the sa same favorites. So you'll see some repeats from previous years, but I feel like they're worth sharing once again. Now job ticket holders are something that I've talked about in past videos, but I find I'm using them for more and more things in my craft room. These are for nine by 12, so there's some wiggle room. So you can actually store your eight and a half by 11 cardstock in here. So these are the pockets that I use for my cardstock storage. Now here is an example of one of the cardstocks for my storage. I have the label up at the top, so I know what cardstock's inside. You can see there are many sheets in there. I just took a job ticket holder and I trimmed a little bit off the top there. And this is the perfect sleeve for my cardstock. Now I store my double-sided adhesive, my masking paper, my glitter papers, my uh, acetate, vellum, everything in these job ticket holders. And I find that they are excellent for storage. And I'll link to the particular ones that I use. And they have a pretty good price point too. You can reuse these many times. So I encourage you to check these out. These are nice and thick and hold up great. 
And by the way, I'll link to my cardstock organization video here if you'd like to learn more. Another product I use for organization a lot are the clear card bags. Now these card bags are the perfect size to hold a card and the coordinating envelope. If you use the basic card size of four and a quarter by five and a half. So whenever I've finished a card, I grab an envelope to match and I slide them both in together into one of these pockets. I remove the release paper, seal it shut, and then I categorize them in my card organization system. And I'll link to a video with that system here so you can check it out if you want to. And now my card is protected. I don't have to worry about anything happening to it. When it's time to send it, I can just grab this, remove the card and envelope, and I can reuse that pocket if I want to. I also know that some people actually mail cards in this clear stamp pocket and just put an address label on the front, so you can do that also if you want. Keep in mind that these are very thin. However, I find they work great for protecting my cards and keeping me organized. Now, if you're like me and like to plan the projects that you're going to do, I recommend the Gina K Designs storage boxes. These are great for keeping different products together that you plan to use together. So I'll take, say, stamps and dies and some cardstock, throw them all in here together, close it up, and then I use a dry erase pen on the top of it and the side of it to label what that project is. And then when you're done, you can erase that dry erase with a dry cloth. You can see it's about an inch thick, so you can put a lot in there and it perfectly fits eight and a half by 11 paper. So it's nice and thick. You've got lots of room to put things in here. And I have a stack of these in my cabinets with different projects that I plan to do. You can also use these for other types of storage. I know some people use these for ink cube storage and for cardstock storage. They're very durable, so you can use them over and over again. Okay, so another product that I found I'm using more this year are clear five drawer organizers. I have a couple different that I, ones that I recommend and I'll link them both below. But basically these are acrylic containers with five drawers that come out very easily. And I like to use them a lot for my markers, but many people use these for ink cube storage and other things. Now I have my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens in here and you can see it's the perfect size. The reason I like these is I can keep this drawer unit in my cabinet and when I need to use the markers, I just pull out whatever drawer of colors I need. Now you'll notice I've put a little color swatch on the side of each of my markers, so I know exactly what color each marker offers. But I also keep my little ink swatch pieces, which you can see over there to the left, in the top of this drawer, so I can easily refer to that. Now I have my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens in here, my Tombow markers, my Arteza pens, and I even have some colored pencils in here. And I really like how easy this is to use. These also stack nicely, which really is helpful for organization. Another product that I've used more and more this year are clear tiered stands. These work great for any of your little bottles, such as Nouveau accents like I have here. I also just got a couple of these for some of my embossing powders and for alcohol inks. I like that they're tiered so you can see what's in the back rows very easily. It's lightweight, inexpensive, and really great for small organization. I actually have these in my cabinet right in the front on a shelf. I actually have things behind it and since it's clear you can really see what's going on behind it so you can kind of double up on some of your storage. Okay, so 2017 seemed to be the year of sequins and gems, so I thought I would share my favorite system for storing them. I use these bead trays. These are great for storing a lot of gems and sequins. Now you can see there's a tray here. It actually comes with the lid, but I don't keep the lid since I keep two of these trays side by side in my Alex drawer units from Ikea. Now there are three different container sizes you can get for these trays. There's a small one, a medium, and a large. I usually am good with the smallest size, but sometimes if I have doubles of a sequin, I put them in the medium, or if I have a really ba big bag of sequins or gems, I put them in that large, but most I keep in the smallest size. Now these open very easily, and then I put a label on the top lid, the white part, 
so that I know what particular company each of these products are from. You can see they're easy to move around. Again, I have a few different options here and I store my sequins in a couple containers and my gems in a couple others. Here you can see how easy they are to open. So you can see there's a little thumb part to pull it open and then there is my label there on the top, again using my label maker. Now there are a few different options for buying the trays and the containers and you can buy additional containers separately. I'll link to the whole kit and caboodle over on my blog and down below so you can check them out. But I did want to show you how I have them stored in my IKEA Alex drawers. So I have two of them side, to, side by side and then I have a couple drawers dedicated to my sequins and my gems. This is a great storage system and really helps to keep things tidy. And as you add more colors, there's room to grow. Okay, so now for other type of organization like on your work desk, this is the Boone Organizer. I hands down have not stuck with an organizer as long as I have this one. I've used this one for many, many years and I am crazy about it. I have two of these in the drawer right on top, right next to where I work. So all of my main supplies are right there. I have my craft knives, my tweezers, my adhesives, my scissors in these two Boone organizers. I like that there are different compartments and they're tilted slightly. So you could have this out on your desk to easily grab the things, but I keep mine in a drawer and I easily grab them from there. I have heard rumors of people making their own from PVC pipe, but I am not that good at DIY kind of stuff. So I made the investment in two of these organizers a long time ago, and I have gotten my money's worth. This sucker is great. You can even hang this on the wall if you want to, to hold your supplies. Now another product that I have fallen head over heels for this year is the Organize More card stand. Now this is meant to put cards on display but I have two of these right at the top of the screen here. So you see my black work surface here, right up at the top, I have two of these where I can set things as I'm creating. Because if you're like me, your desk gets messy and you lose things as you're creating. So by being able to set things up here, I can see them easily and grab them. I also put on these two card stands, the things that I hope to use soon or I want to remember to use such as these Sharpies or other dies or stamp sets. I even have a few products that I keep on here all the time because I use them so much. I do have another one of these card stands over on a different part of my room where I have some cards on display that I got from other people. But you can see how handy this is to have on your desk to easily find things. Now I do also use these for my wood mounted stamp storage. I have a few of these on shelves in my cabinets and I can put my wood mounted stamps on here and easily see them all. This is really handy. Now in the past, I instead use spice racks like that are tiers and I'll link to a video that shows that system. But I really liked the angle and the layout of these card stands for my wood mounted block stamps. So it is another option to consider. And you can see I have two of the card stands up close together, and these are sitting behind the Nouveau Drops in that clear tiered stand that I showed you earlier. I'll tell you, in my craft room, I try to make use of every little corner, every little inch that I have available. And stands like this are really helpful for that. Now this card stand is from a company called Organize More. I have been using Organize More ink storage units for many years. In fact, I remember where I was when I ordered my first ink storage unit from them. I was waiting to pick up my son from kindergarten. He's 11 now, so I've been using these for many years. And their quality, I love. And I love that they come finished and white and bright and clean looking. So I'm a big fan of theirs. And they have many different options available for different inks. So all of my inks are stored in the Organize More ink storage units. I encourage you to check out the different options and sizes that they have available. And I just wanted to say that the folks over at Inc. Organize More are so kind. It's a family business and they have hearts of gold, so I can't recommend them enough. Now this year I, I begged them to create a mini ink cube tray and I love what they came up with. This is the Organize More mini ink cube tray. You can see it holds a bunch of mini ink cubes. It's a nice tray that's white and finished. 
and you can easily grab each of the ink cubes out of here. It maximizes how many it holds in the space, but they're still easy to get out. I even keep a replacement foam in the bottom of each of my ink cubes so I can use that particular foam with my ink blending tool if I plan to do blending. So here you can see I have all my distress inks in here. You can easily grab them very quickly. And the nice thing is, is you can stack these trays together. So I have several of these mini ink cube trays and I have them side by side in my Alex drawer units. And I have a different tray for each company. So these are my Lawn Fawn ink cubes. And I'm a big fan of ink cubes because they're inexpensive and a great way to have more colors. So I decided to go ahead and invest in a few of these trays for my growing collection. Now here is my Alex drawer unit from Ikea. I have two side by side and they're actually stacked. So there are four in one drawer. So you can stack two of these on top of each other in one of the Alex drawers. Now this is the wide Alex drawer unit. One of these trays will fit in the narrow Alex units also. If you don't have Ikea drawer units, you can just stack these trays in any drawer or on any shelf. Now the reason I'm really pleased with this storage system for my mini ink cubes is that I can easily grab a tray and bring it over to my desk and I have a bunch of colors in front of me. Also, it's easy to just quickly grab one cube out of it. So if you are like me and are investing in a lot of ink cubes, you might wanna check out this great tray. Okay, there are a couple other random things I wanted to show you from my craft room. One are card stands. I've been using card stands for decorating in my craft room for many years. I use different heights of card stands and I'll link to them below. These are inexpensive and a great way to put your kids art or cards on display. Now I put cards on display that other people have made for me, some crafty friends and some for my kids. And it's a nice way to have things that are inspiring to you around you. But you could also put your own cards up if you want to. I also find that it's handy if maybe there's a stamp set that you want to remember to use. You can put it in the card stand and put it right on your desk. And that way it's right there and easy to find. Now this is a shelf right behind where I work where I have a few different things on display. Some of the cards are just sitting on the shelf and some are in the card stands. So I encourage you to check those out if you like to have inspiration sitting around you in your craft room. Now I really wanted to mention the hand vac another time in my favorite crafty things series. This is the hand vac. This is the pivot hand vac. I can't, I can't sing the praises of this guy enough. I really think he's very helpful in quickly cleaning up any mess in your craft room. I use him to clean off my desk, to clean off around where I work on the floor. I have one in my kitchen also. But if you're like me and try to say stay tidy as you work, I recommend this guy. There's a little stand that it comes with that you can recharge it when it's not in use and it closes up nice and small so you can even have it inside a cabinet if you wanted to. Now I know this isn't really organization but it's something that really helps me to keep my craft room usable and happy. Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about today is on-the-go crafting. So on-the-go crafting is really important to me for many reasons. I'm one of those people that likes to stay busy and always have something kind of in my hands that I'm working on. But also I have struggles with anxiety and I find that by crafting on the go, I can handle those anxieties much better. Now I'm still present and still talking to people, but by keeping my hands busy, I feel more comfortable. So I thought I would share with you a few of the things that I use when I'm crafting on the go. Now in past videos, I have shared this bag from 31 Gifts. Now it is an excellent bag. It's small and easy to take on the go. So recently they came out with new patterns for this bag. So I have to order a couple new ones because the new patterns are adorable. But the function of this bag is excellent. So it zips around so you can completely close it and not worry about anything coming out. There's this nice large pocket on the top that I normally store my cardstock pieces in. There's a clear pocket here where I keep things like scissors. If it's stitching, I keep my needles in there. Now these mesh pockets on the inside are where I keep my markers usually. And you can see there's a lot of room in there for other things. Again, this completely zips shut so you don't have to worry about anything falling out.
And there are handles, so you can easily hang this wherever you are. This bag is kind of like my tried and true. I've used it many times, and I just am really impressed with how well it works. Well, this year I also started using the Misty bag. This is from the folks at My Sweet Petunia, and it's great for stamping on the go. This has a ton of storage space. You can easily store your Misty stamping tool. And there are also these great clear pockets with zippers that are stuck in there with Velcro. They're actually stuck also here with little plastic tags. They are meant to be cut off, but I actually keep them in so that I don't drop these bags when I'm at baseball practice in the bleachers. Now for this one, I will often have my Misty in here with some ink, some cardstock, and a couple stamp sets so I can stamp on the go. Then in this side, I keep a lot of my Copic markers so that I can do my coloring when I'm on the go. Now, Lila has recently taken over my Misty bag that has the pink trim on it. There's the black pool and pink trim bag versions. And she keeps a lot of her crafting supplies in here and also lots of toys. There is a strap available so you can hang this over your shoulder if you want to. And this one by far holds the most supplies out of the different options I've showed you. I just happen to use all three for different things. So the first one I showed you, I used with quick coloring supplies. This one I use with more hefty stamping and coloring supplies. And this one here, this is the Illustrated Faith bag, I use for my stitching supplies. But you could definitely use it for other supplies too, such as coloring. Now I had a different version of this in the past that I've shared with you, but they came out with this new print, which I thought was really cute. Now you can see it's gorgeous print. It actually zips down the side so you can open it up when you get to where you want to go. And there are lots of pockets inside. Now you see that pocket on the right there that has the pattern on it with the zipper on it, this one here. Now I order extra of those so I can have a few in there with different projects that I'm working on. I like to stitch on paper and I'll link to the video where I talk about that. And I find that this is the best system for that. Now this is really meant for Bible journaling, so if you have books or you like to do Bible journaling, I do recommend this bag. But really, I like all three for different reasons. You can see how much they all hold here. And if you're looking for something for on-the-go crafting, I would recommend any of these. So there you have it, my favorite organization from 2017. Again, I'm sorry there was a delay with it. If you are interested in these supplies, I link them all below in my YouTube description. But be sure to go to my blog where I'll have more information and a giveaway. I thank you for everything this year. I really appreciate everyone who watches my videos. Sometimes I make these videos in my craft room and I wonder you know, who's out there looking at them. So it really means a lot to me that you spend some of your precious time with me. In the middle here, I have a couple other videos that might be of interest to you. Wanted to wish you a very happy 2018 and I'll see you again soon.